Hi, this is Wes Clark, I'm the President of LIES, Linguistic Interrogation Expert Services. Statement analysis can be a major asset and provide insight for investigators working on missing person cases. If you're talking with a family member or people who are close in relationship with a missing person, look for changes in language and how they talk about that missing person. For instance, does the husband refer to the missing person as my wife several times early on in the statement, and then all of a sudden that drops from his language and then he uses just the pronoun she instead. If you see changes, when did the change occur? What was going on at the time in the statement? What prompted the change? In a missing person case we investigated, the husband's language changed regarding his wife, and in essence, she actually disappeared from his language immediately after they had a discussion, and he later confessed to killing her during that discussion. Another important thing to look for is if the individual used past tense verbs when talking about the missing person. You know, I loved my wife, I missed my baby, she was so sweet, um, she was so amazing, my kids wanted me, they needed me, now I can't help them. This has proven to be a strong indicator that the subject may know that the missing person is in fact dead. If the, if the person is missing, the hope of most family members is that they are still alive, so why would anyone talk about this person in the past tense like they're not here anymore? If the person included a lot of times within their statement, you know, does that continue throughout their statement or is it only in a portion of it? Now, how much information was covered between the times mentioned in there as well? Is there a four block of time that is hardly any content in it at all, or is there a five minute period of time that covers like 25% of the statement? Now, why is there so much or so little time at that point in the statement? And does this correspond to the time we know a crime may have been committed? Is there any missing time or indicators of missing information either by looking at the times mentioned in the statement or through specific linguistic bridges? Also, look for dis, you know, descriptions of any conversations that the individual had with the missing person prior to their disappearance. What was the context of that conversation? What was going on? And look for changes in pronouns, such as I, which connect the individual to the statement and shows commitment. So when it is missing from the statement, the individual may be trying to distance himself or herself from what they're saying at that point and what's going on in the statement. These are just some of the key tips and insights that our training courses provide regarding investigative statement analysis and how it can improve missing person investigations.